Okay, so we will continue with our lesson with lipids now, or we move on to the next chapter. I think we haven't finished that. And uh, we will continue with uh, glycolipids. Okay. Um, glycolipids is part of the uh, complex lipids. No? If you remember, there is a simple and complex lipids. The simple ones are the fatty acid, the glycerides, triglycerides, or triacylglycerols. Of course, we have discussed that a lot. And then the other one is the complex lipids, which we have the glycolipids and the phospholipids. Uh, complex one. No? So the phospholipids belongs to the complex uh, lipids, also the glycolipids. And the previous meeting, we had discussed on the glycerol phospholipids and sphingolipids, and we just have to remember on the difference between the phospholipids and the glycolipids in their structure. You don't see phosphates no, with glycolipids, but with phospholipids, uh, you can see phosphate in the main structure. And the difference between glycerophospholipids and sphingolipids is that for glycerophospholipids, from the name itself, it has a glycerol component in it with a fatty acid, and the sphingolipids, it has a sphingosine component, and of course, with a phosphate. You know, so because uh, they belong to phospholipids. And the glycolipids, from the word glyco, no, you can see a monosaccharide present uh, in the structure and attached to your sphingosine unit and of course your fatty acid. Okay, so one kind of the glycolipids is what we call a cerebricide. In the cerebricide, you have the structure, of course. Uh, you have the sphingosine unit. Remember the sphingosine? Uh, you have the structure and the uh, three carbons where you can have your monosaccharide or disaccharide structure. And then the second one you can see here is your fatty acid, your fatty acid rather, okay? So there is two components, your fatty acid and your monosaccharides or your carbohydrates, your monosaccharides, uh, disaccharides, or your carbohydrates, okay? So you have your sphingosine unit, no? And the sphingosine unit, you just have to remember on the first three structures and on the third structure is your kaning taas, no? Long chain of hydrocarbon, it actually contains 15, so uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, and an OH here. And then of course, you have your fatty acid. This, this one is part of the sphingosine unit, no? Taas ng sphingosine unit na kay 15, 15, 16, 17, 18, okay, in the structure, you have 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And uh, the first carbon here, you can see your monosaccharide. And in the second carbon, you can see your fatty acid. So how do you know if it's a fatty acid? So your fatty acid, excuse me, because it is already uh, bounded no, to the sphingosine unit. In the original sphingosine unit, this one can have your sphingosine structure. Your sphingosine it contains, you have your CH2. So. You have this fingersing unit. Uh, this is the the last one in the second carbon. This one is a third carbon with an OH can you? And the second carbon you have your NH2 can you? But when you have your fatty acid, mawala in yung NH2, no, because you have your carboxylic acid, C double bond OOH, and it binds the NH2, it becomes an amide. Okay, so hydrolyzed. So mawala ang OH. 
But you can see in the structure, this looks like your fatty acid. You have CD1, LSH2, the depends on the number of carbons here. And then, you have the and then instead of OH and the first carbon here, um, it's already bounded to the monosaccharide or any oligosaccharide. Okay, so this is like carbohydrate. You know? So carbohydrate and fatty acids that belongs to the glycolipids. So another one is you have your you have your fatty acid here, kidney in H2. You have your ceramide unit. This is your ceramide unit here, kidney. Ceramide unit is part of the sphingosine condition. Okay, getting a part, ceramide, ceramide unit. Remember, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, 15 plus a 16 in like carbon with an OH. So this one is actually the ceramide unit. So, and then on the second carbon, this is your first carbon with an OH, you actually form a glycosidic bond with the monosaccharide. What is glycosidic bond? Remember your carbohydrates uh, chapter, you know, glycosidic bond is simply a carbon O carbon linkage, right? From the OH, from your monosaccharide, remember your monosaccharide or oligosaccharide, it always contains like a lot of OH, a lot of alcohols, and you know, wind, okay, depending on the monosaccharide. And usually, of course, you remember your carbohydrates. We show our monosaccharides or oligosaccharides in a cyclic form. This one, so your cyclic form can be either chair or Howard projection. So whenever you have your carbon oxygen carbon bond, because you have your sphinx, uh, carbon oxygen here, so mawala ni si hydrogen no because we form a bond with an OH here. Mawala actually in the formation of this in a monosaccharide example, glucose, no, namani OH in the original structure of glucose, and you have here an H, no, while I actually see water H2 pod when you form a glycosidic bond. So in the structure of glycolipids, you also call that as part serpicides, no, form a glycosidic bond between the monosaccharide or liposaccharide in a sphingosin structure, and you form an amide linkage with your fatty acid and your sphingosine structure, you can see here. So again, when you see your, look at your, where's the fatty acid? You don't see a single bond no, OH, no. Know that a bond is already formed, no, and my hydrolyzed, no, while I see water, see OH here, when it forms a bond, and the bond that's being formed is an amide here, okay? And then, of course, your sphingosine unit, the sphingosine unit, the ask any structure here, can you, a lot, a lot of carbons, we call this one a ceramide unit. Okay, whenever you see a sphingosin unit, for example, it's the sphingolipids, no, you also sphingosin unit. But except instead of a phosphate attached here, directly in the monosaccharide or oligosaccharide, this is formed by the glycosidic part. Okay, so that is the difference with the the difference of the glycolipids and the phospholipids, one type of phospholipid is a sphingolipids. And you can see in the structure that you also have a sphingosin, but it has a glycolipids. And you also have your fatty acid. And uh, instead of uh, a monosaccharide or oligosaccharide, you instead have a phosphate with sphingolipids in a colloid. So just note on the difference in the structure, even you have your sphingosin. Unit. So, pag makakita ganin mo ang um, monosaccharide or oligosaccharide the structure of a sphingosin unit, no, kanyang sphingosin, kung taong din mo, oh, marag na siya OH here and carbon na siya NH here. Okay, this most probably is a sphingosin structure with a long chain of hydrocarbon here, the ceramide unit, so this was probably a sphingosin structure. And then see an amide here formed with the formation of from the carboxylic acid and amine. Then you see an amide structure here, and you can see this one is a glycolipid. And one kind is you have your cerebrosides. So another one, you have your ganglicides. For the ganglicides, you see actually a lot of oligosaccharides, you know, the like the So can, can anyone identify where is your sphingosin unit here? Can identify when you can see. 
Itaon ninyo where is the carbon with an OH. And the second carbon in the sphingosin, there is an NH there. But you don't see the NH, NH2 rather. Instead, you see here an amide. What is an amide? It's a zero bond O NH N bond. Okay, in the same structure that you see with proteins, that's zero bond O. And so carbon, nitrogen, and nitrogen, and hydrogen. Carbon here is not attached to hydrogen, now, but nitrogen. It's the hydrogen is attached to nitrogen, not to hydrogen carbon. So carbon, nitrogen, and nitrogen, hydrogen. Okay. And then this is your fatty acid unit here, pending now what kind of fatty acid is being attached. And then you have your third carbon. So the first carbon, second carbon, third carbon is an OH. And here is a long chain of hydrocarbons here with the second carbon having a double bond. This is your ceramide unit. But what you can see here is in the first structure, you see like a, a carbohydrate, a monosaccharide. You have the a glycosidic bond formed here, the carbon O carbon bond. Okay, so this one is like, is it look like uh, glucose? Uh, down, up, down. And then you have your uh, hydrogen here. You can, you have your down, up, down. Okay, for, for this, your beta will always be up. So you can have down, up, down. You can see here, down, up, down. Okay, down, up, down. This is like a glucose. But here on the one, two, one, two, three, four. Here you form a glycosidic bond with another monosaccharide here. Okay, so you have a monosaccharide, a glycosidic bond here. A glycosidic bond, remember again, it's carbon oxygen carbon bond. Okay, a glycosidic bond, it's down, but it's tani ni bend yung koan because this one is a beta up yung OH again in the formation of the glycosidic bond. If you remember your carbohydrates. Uh, mawala si water. So, before din siya na-form, di ba na siya OH diri, na po siya OH. So, kung O na lang diri, uh, so asa day si H2O. So, mawala si water when they form a bond. In the same way that mawala pa si water, we can form an amide bond here. So, this one is a lot of monosaccharides linked to each other. So, you can say this one is an oligosaccharide, like few uh, monosaccharides attached to each other. Okay, so when you have this large uh, chain, short chain of oligosaccharides, so now oligosaccharides, those are um, few monosaccharides attached to each other. Okay, so you have your gang side. So glycolipids, again, is a, are like complex lipids that contains carbohydrates and ceramide units, and one group. The server sites consist of ceramide, mono, or oligosaccharides. You can have your other groups such as gummy sites contains complex uh, carbohydrate structures like the one that you have mentioned. So say complex, the potential of monosaccharides uh, linked to each other through a glycosidic bond. So in server sites, <clears throat> the fatty acids of the ceramide part will contain either 18 carbon or 24 carbon chains. And the later form is found only in this complex lipids. So you can have your cerebrosides when the you have your the fatty acid contains a 24 carbon chain. Let's see. You have here, you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 24. So when you have 24 carbon units and fatty acids, you actually call that one as cerebrosides. Okay. So usually when you have your ceramide part, ceramide may contain this one. You can uh, contain your fatty acids. Your fatty acids usually 18 to 24, but if it's 24, you call this one as um, cerebrosides. Cerebrosides. Now you just have to remember that. The general name is always a glycolipid. No? Depending na again, the name will vary, like particular name will be given depending on what uh, kind of fatty acids being attached or what kind of monosaccharide is being attached. And this one you call as glucoserebrosides or cerebrosides. You can have your glucose and a cerebrocyte. Cerebrocyte, again, you have fatty acids that has 24 carbon units in the structure. This one. Um, you have an 18 unit uh, 
uh, fatty acid in this one, we have your galactose instead of a glucose. And so this one is a different kind of glycolytic. So the cerebral sites occur primarily in the brain, accounting for 7% of the brain's dry weight, dry weight and uh, nerve synapses. So that's how important our glycolytics are. It's very important actually that we should be taking some form of um, lipids always. This one again is uh, it's a glucose cerebricides, cerebricides. So cerebricides have a single sugar uh, linked to ceramide, and those with galactose are correctly found in the plasma membrane of cells in neutral tissues, and those with glucose in the plasma membrane of cells in non neutral tissues. Example, you have your galactoserbicide entirely found in the cell membranes, everything. So in the bodies, in the animal structure, you know, uh, there's the, the difference when um, the nerve uh, tissue or the tissue rather, the neural tissue, the non neural tissue uses galactose for the neural and it uses glucose monosaccharide for the non neural tissue. And for example, galactose herbicides, you can find it one in the neural tissue, entirely found in the cell membranes of the cell. So another one, you have the gummicides again, the gummicides. No. Sorry, this is uh, I have already talked the glycolipids. Again, you call this one as membrane lipid, lipids, and it's predominant in plant cells. One or two galactose residues are connected by glycosidic localized in thycoloid membranes. If you're familiar, if you remember rather not your uh, plant cells, you have a lot of biology. You know? So you can see in the thycoloid membranes of your plant uh, cells, you, know? uh, you can have your that's intermediate membranes of the color chloroplast, uh, you can actually see uh, two galactose residues in there. And they make up 70 to 80 percent of the total membrane lipids, lipids of the vascular plant. So here is the structure. Sorry, this is... Uh, So it's like a home. Okay, I think that's all for like lipids. Just have to remember on the sphingosin structure. And if there is no sphingus and st structure, then you can have consider that one to belong to the uh, glycerophospholipids. 
Okay, so now we move on to another complex uh, lipids. Uh, I call this one as steroids. And so if you remember the classifications of lipids, you have the simple complex lipids now where you have the uh, phospholipids, glycolipids, katong mga, yeah, you have that. And then for the simple one, you have the fats and waxes. Another kind of lipids are the steroids. Okay, so what are steroids? So the steroids, again, are the third major class of lipids, which are, uh, which are compounds containing the following, uh, containing the ring system. Look at the structure. So this is your uh, ring system of a steroid. You have one, two, three, four ring structure. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Wala ka na share screen, ma'am. You are sharing screen. Stop share. You are sharing. What about this? You are sharing screen. Kita. Okay. So again, we are now on another, another kind of lipids. Uh, we're talking about steroids now. It's a, if you look at the classification of lipids, you have the simple, you have the complex, the complex again that we've discussed, you have the phospholipids, glycolipids, for instance. Another kind of lipids is the steroids now. And this one would have a different structure as what we have seen in the simple lipids. Now you can see your fatty acids there and waxes, uh, you see your um, carbohydrate, carbo carboxylic acids also in a long chain of um, hydrocarbons. And you have also, if you remember the structure of complex lipids, not a particular structure in the phospholipids, like lipids that it belongs to the complex. For steroids, there is a different structure that we can actually see. You know? Again, the, the steroids is a third major class of lipids. It has a ring system like this one, uh, one, two, three, four ring system. There's a six, three, six membered ring system. And uh, and then in the, it's actually numbered. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, 9, 10, and back 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 carbons for steroids. But on this part, you can see a lot of hydro you see a hydrocarbon also attached. Yes, so in this structure, again, there's a three segment. This steroid system is uh, a steroid nucleus. Can you this one? This will be our steroid nucleus. No? Three, six number green, fused, siya, misa, fused, katapad, ga, merge rather. Um, Cyclic structure na a six member ring up a five member ring. We call that one a third nucleus. Storage are thus completely different in structure from the lipids. No? Of course, you can see in the structure related to the with the previous one that we have discussed. You don't see a fatty acids in there or a carboxylic acids in the structures. So they are not necessarily esters, although some are, uh, you can see some esters, but not necessarily don't see es esters in the structure. Numerous steroids have been isolated from plants, animals, and human beings. Um, human is location of double bonds in the fused ring system in the nature and the location of substituents, substituents distinguish one steroid from another. So most steroids have oxygen functional groups. You can see a double bond or an OH at carbon three. You can see this one. Normally, not try OH or double bond O, carbon double bond O. In some kind of side chain at carbon 17. In a side chain, can you can see a side chain? But you can see like normally in carbon 3 nesha is either OH and a double bond O, and then carbon carbon 10 I CH3 or another alkyl, and we still a double bond. So depending, but you can see the structure, but this is what you call as a steroid uh, nucleus, no six. A six to look at six number green and stack a five number green. Maginisha. So, and then the in whatever is being attached, uh, side chains or other uh, alkyl groups. No? So, many also have double bond from carbon five to either carbon four or six, like this one, carbon 
um, five here. This is one, two, three, four, five. Easily made double bond, carbon five, carbon six, somewhere here, somewhere here. Normally, again, an OH here. But whenever you're seeing a three member, three six member green in another five member green on this manner, which is, which is fused, when I say fused, you can sometimes have like carbon, another ring, carbon, no, another ring here. But this one is fused. So whenever you see a structure again, this one, always remember, this belongs to the class uh, steroids. So here is an important steroid. We call this one as a cholesterol. I mean, of course, you're familiar with this one. It's a human gallstone. For example, human gallstone is almost pure cholesterol. You can see this one. You have the gallstone part of your body. Okay. And here you can see the structure of cholesterol. You can identify on the one, two, three, six member green, which are fused, and then a five member green here. And you can see on carbon one, two, three, nakai OH here, and on carbon 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, five double bond here. And then here, somewhere here, carbon 10, you can have metal group and another metal group. And this is carbon 17. This one, can use a five member green as I side structure, side, depending on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. The six number uh, uh, alkyl chain here with again branching, branching. This one is your cholesterol. Okay, say H2 here, okay, say H2 here. And carbons and your carbon 13 and carbon 10. 13 and carbon 10. This is your cholesterol. So, what is cholesterol? Again, if you count on the number of carbons for this structure, cholesterol, cholesterol is a C27 steroid molecule that is a component of cell membranes and a precursor for other steroid based lipids. It is the most abundant steroid in the human body. And the most important one, of course, cholesterol serves as a plasma membrane component in all animal cells. For example, if you have, you have you know, red blood cells, uh, in, it's also a second important function. Its second important function is to serve as a raw material for the synthesis of other steroids, such as other steroids, such as sex hormones and adre adrenocorticoid hormones and even bile salts. No? Cholesterol exists both in the free form and is terrified with fatty acids. So we'll look at structurally turn over. But always remember when we're talking of cholesterol, it's a part of a steroid. And again, if you remember the steroid, na kay six number green fused and a five number green. So because the correlation between a high serum cholesterol, remember that this is part of a plasma membrane. This is part or a component of a cell membrane. No, so because the correlation between a high serum cholesterol level and this is such as you have the arteriosclerosis, the bar member, yung mga um, nanay tatay, if you are um, lola, lola, no, they always check for their cholesterol level because there is a high correlation between the high serum cholesterol levels and diseases, arteriosclerosis, you know, with high blood, no, it receives so much publicity. Uh, many people are afraid of cholesterol because it's some kind of poison. Apart from being poisonous, no, it's not poison. It's just simply part of our system. So far from being poisonous, cholesterol is in fact necessary for human life. In essence, our livers manufacture cholesterol that satisfies our needs even without dietary intake. So our liver always manufactures cholesterol. It's always part of our a metabolism, the cholesterol. And again, our liver uh, manufacturer produce cholesterol that satisfies our needs even without dietary intake. So, maski pag dita magkaon ng mga fatty foods, no? um, our body will always produce cholesterol. So, when cholesterol levels exceeds uh, 150 to 100, uh, 150 milligrams per ml, or 100 ml rather. Cholesterol synthesized in the liver is reduced to half and the normal rate of production. So, gina controls atong body, no, there is only a certain level that our body will produce our 
cholesterol. So the amount of cholesterol is regulated and in excess rather than the presence of cholesterol that is associated with disease. So, and it is an excess rather. So when, when our body produces an excess of cholesterol, and that is the one that is associated with disease, for example, um, our, our body, our liver now would produce cholesterol um, should not be more than 100, 150 milligrams per 100 ml of your blood, okay? Um, if your body uh, produces more than that one, so that is already associated with some kind of disease. So for example, atherosclerosis, there is a high coloration easily in some reported um, articles or journals, now high coloration between cholesterol and atherosclerosis. So cholesterol in the body is in a dynamic state. So we always have to, uh, it's always in dynamic state, meaning when our body produces large, so of course our body will have to, our liver will have to stop producing that one so that it can be regulated. regulated. Same with other um, hormones or other metabolites in our body. Uh, when our body produces a certain amount, for example, no, uh, those and I, mga, uh, we always have our thyroid, uh, thyroids, right? We have our thyroxine, and our body produces thyroxine. Um, our body will always regulate certain uh, amount of the chemicals in our body. Uh, that is how we exist. No, we, we don't, uh, our body would, wouldn't want uh, to produce too much because too much of some chemicals would be uh, detrimental, could produce uh, diseases or could lead to this, some disease. So just like that, a cholesterol body will also regulate the production of cholesterol. So cholesterol, again, is in dynamic state. It constantly circulates in the blood. So when it is high, our body will stop producing. When our blood is already high in cholesterol body or our liver will stop producing cholesterol already. So cholesterol and esters of cholesterol being hydrophobic need a water-soluble carrier to circulate in the aqueous medium of the plant. So if you look at the structure of your cholesterol, then you know, you can see a lot of this one is very hydrophobic. It's just made up of carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen. Whenever, whenever you see a structure that is not made up of polar groups, no polar to my OH, no, you can see there's a polar group here, but this is just a very small part for the whole structure. The rest is already hydrophobic. So if our body is made up mostly of water, now, how would it how would it become uh, solubilized in water? So because of that, our cholesterol and esters of cholesterol being hydrophobic need a water carrier, water soluble carrier to circulate in the aqueous medium of blood. So how cholesterol along with fat is transported by what you call as a lipoprotein. Um, Lipoprotein, most lipoproteins contain a core of hydrophobic lipid structure. Um, most lipoproteins contain a core of hydrophobic lipid molecules surrounded by a shell of um, hydrophilic molecules such as proteins and phospholipids. And so we have two kinds of lipoproteins. We have a high density lipoprotein or HDL. You call that one is a good cholesterol. It consists of about 33% protein and about 30% cholesterol. And it picks up cholesterol in the body and return to the liver for disposal. The other one is a low density lipoprotein or you call this one as a bad cholesterol. So it contains about 25% protein and about 50% cholesterol. So you can see that there is just a different level percent of cholesterol between a high density lipoprotein and a low density uh, lipoprotein. So in the low density lipoprotein, you percent of proteins. 
So eicosin is a lipoprotein, so it contains lipids and proteins. No? So the light low density lipoproteins is a bad cholesterol, contains about 25% lipoprotein, so low yang density, low yang percent of protein, but you see a high percent of cholesterol. So you could, that's why you call this one is a bad cholesterol. No? The level of cholesterol in this in the system in this uh, lipoprotein is already very high and it delivers cholesterol to cells. And we also have very low density lipoprotein or VLDL. It, 